The intent of this video is to discuss the likely grim reality premise as to why no evacuation warnings were given to the atomic bomb city targets of Hiroshima, Kakura, and Nagasaki by connecting the dots of the period documents and timelines. This is a part 3 video in the channel's atomic bombing series. The atomic bomb interim in committee's position regarding target city warning was discussed in this declassified May 31, 1945 meeting minutes document. All of the images in this video are declassified. The committee chairman was Secretary of War Henry Stimson. The interim committee members are shaded here. The invited scientists are shaded here, including Oppenheimer. The committee discussed the atomic bombing potential city target lists and the effects. There were several points of general consensus. This included, do not give the Japanese any warning. Do not concentrate on a civilian area. The bomb should make a profound impression on the inhabitants. The city target should be a war plant surrounded by workers' housing. The report goes on to state that the bomb should have a great psychological effect on Japan and first use should be so spectacular that it will be internationally recognized. The policy not to provide any evacuation warning was again reiterated in this June 1, 1945 follow-up atomic bomb interim committee meeting. Secretary of State James Burns indicated the atomic bomb should be used as soon as possible, dropped on a war plant surrounded by workers' housings, and used without prior warning. Fifteen days later, the scientific panel released their recommendations, as discussed on this June 16, 1945 memo titled, Recommendations on the Immediate Use of Nuclear Weapons. Oppenheimer was representing the panel and drafted the response. The panel was asked their position on the bomb's usage. They recognized that usage of the bomb would save U.S. lives. The scientists' opinions were not unanimous. The majority of the panel saw no acceptable alternative other than direct military use. No discussion regarding a warning was give, to be given to the Japanese. The Trinity test occurred one month later on July 16, 1945. A day after the Trinity test, a group of 70 scientists petitioned the president to reconsider using the atomic bombs against Japan, as shown on this image dated July 17, 1945. It was drafted by Leo Szilard and is known as the Szilard Petition. Oppenheimer did not sign the petition. The scientists expressed the bombing of Japan is not justified without clear proper notification and a chance to surrender. Truman was never shown the petition until after the bombs were dropped. Eight days after the Trinity test, the final city target list, city populations, and target selection rationale is shown on this July 24, 1945 memo to General Arnold titled Groves Project. The memo indicates that important military and industrial leaders are seeking shelter in these cities. The cities selected and the rationale included Hiroshima, Nagasaki, Kokura, and Niigata. The standing no warning policy was still in effect. Two days later, Truman issued the Potsdam Surrender Terms on July 26, 1945. As discussed on the September 1945 Office of the War Information document titled Leaflet Newsletter, the 13-point surrender declaration was broadcast to Japan and leaflets were dropped outlining the surrender terms. The front and back leaflets were dropped over Japan, shown here from a 1945 document titled Report on Psychological Warfare in the Southwest Pacific, 1944 through 1945. The text of the 13-point declaration is shown here. Point 13 indicates that government of Japan needs to accept unconditional surrender. The alternative is prompt and utter destruction. No mention of the atomic bomb or targets in the declaration. The day after the Potsdam Declaration, 21st Bomber Command distributed leaflets over Japanese cities warning of an impending firebomb attack, as discussed on this page from the reference shown earlier. Bomber Command dropped leaflets over 11 cities warning Japan of impending city attacks. The warning is not connected with the atomic bomb. The leaflets indicated four of the 11 cities listed will be destroyed. The 11 candidate target cities are listed here. Neither Hiroshima, Nagasaki, nor Kokura are listed. Citizens were urged to evacuate these 11 cities. A follow-up leaflet 12-city target list was released three days later on July 31, 1945. The target cities are listed here. Again, neither Hiroshima, Nagasaki, nor Kokura were on the list. 
99.5% of the urban core of the city of Toyama was destroyed the next day by B-29s dropping napalm incendiaries. The leaflet listing the 12 target cities is shown here. Each circle is a target city. The final target primary and backup list for both atomic missions is shown here from a 1945 headquarters of the 20th Air Force Tactical Mission Report. The cities of Hiroshima, Kokura, and Nagasaki are listed as primary, secondary, and tertiary targets respectively for the first atomic bombing mission. The first atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima on August 6, 1945. Let's listen to Truman's announcement of this event. A short time ago, an American airplane dropped one bomb on Hiroshima and destroyed its usefulness to the enemy. That bomb has more power than 20,000 tons of TNT. The Japanese began the war from the air at Pearl Harbor. They have been repaid many fold and the end is not yet. With this bomb, we have now added a new and revolutionary increase in destruction to supplement the growing power of our armed forces. In their present form, these bombs are now in production, and even more powerful forms are in development. It is an atomic bomb. It is a harnessing of the basic power of the universe. The force from which the sun draws its power has been loosed against those who brought war to the Far East. We are now prepared to destroy more rapidly and completely every productive enterprise the Japanese have in any city. We shall destroy their docks, their factories, and their communications. Let there be no mistake, we shall completely destroy Japan's power to make war. It was to spare the Japanese people from utter destruction that the ultimatum of July the 26th was issued at Potsdam. Their leaders promptly rejected that ultimatum. If they do not now accept our terms, they may expect a reign of ruin from the air, the like of which has never been seen on this earth. Behind this air attack will follow sea and land forces in such numbers and power as they have not yet seen and with the fighting skill of which they are already well aware. Truman's atomic bomb announcement was broadcast to Japan as discussed on this page from the reference shown earlier. He indicated a reign of ruin will befall Japan if it does not accept the Potsdam Declaration. We will use this weapon against your homeland. Inquire to Hiroshima if you want proof of our claim. Ask Emperor Hirohito to end the war. Cease military resistance or we will drop more bombs. Evacuate your cities now. The atomic bomb announcement leaflet is shown on this page from an August 1945 United States Pacific Fleet and Pacific Ocean Areas Bulletin titled Psychological Warfare Part 2. No target city names were listed. Apparently, this leaflet was released after the second atomic bomb was detonated over Nagasaki. This premise is based on a May 1946 memo to General Groves titled, History of Psychological Warfare, Manhattan Project. The leaflet distribution was not coordinated with the second atomic bombing mission on August 9th. The leaflets were dropped a day after the atomic bombing. More flyers were developed both after the second bomb and Russia's entry into the war. This leaflet shows a Russian and American soldier shaking hands over Japan. This memo from Groves to the Chief of Staff indicates that a third atomic bomb will be ready for the next target on August 17th or 18th, 1945. Japan finally accepted the Potsdam Declaration surrender terms five days after the Nagasaki mission. So, why were the atomic bomb target cities not provided evacuation warnings of the impending attacks? One reason could be that had the warning been given, the Japanese may have deployed additional bomber interceptors and anti-aircraft resources to those cities. This argument is weak, though. Like 21st Bomber Command, the leaflets could have listed Hiroshima, Kokura, Nagasaki, along with 10 or so other decoy cities. Also, Iwo Jima-based P-51s and P-47 fighters and decoy bombers could have escorted the B-29s carrying the atomic bomb. 
Another, likely more viable reason is that the targeting and term committees wanted the comprehensive effects of the bomb's destructive power to be evaluated, the effects on both infrastructure and humans. Recall that the interim committee specifically desired the target to be surrounded by workers' housing and no evacuation warning be given. Also, another goal of the bomb was to make a spectacular impression. Several city features that made Hiroshima a desirable target are listed here from a 1947 United States Strategic Bombing Survey report titled, A Report on Physical Damage in Japan. The city of Hiroshima has no natural barriers to shield it from the atomic bomb. Hiroshima also exhibited a high population density, flimsy construction, and building congestion. These factors made it a choice target for maximum results. In summary, no atomic bomb city evacuation warning was issued for either Hiroshima, Kokura, or Nagasaki. The interim committee specifically indicated on two occasions that a Japanese warning was not to be given. Channel commentary. It can be inferred from the documents presented the interim committee desired the target cities to be occupied so the human effects of the atomic bomb can be evaluated. Do you agree sufficient evidence has been provided to support this conclusion premise? If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting, and or subscribing to the channel, World War II U.S. Bombers.